So first speaker, Garth Isles, um, spent a lifetime in sustainable land use in New Zealand and overseas, um, carrying out land use capability mapping, and he's also been Hawke's Bay Regional Council Manager in land management, and now does consulting work. So, Garth. Point should come up automatically. I think forward, back, and that's a pointer. Okay, cool. Just doing the stuff. Good morning. I always reckon that they should add one item to the OSH warnings, and that is when there's a nice tsunami, go to the window and watch. You'll never get a better view. <laughs> um. Right. Past, um, past conferences, we've used the Hawke's Bay Land District as the description of the area. This time I've used the Hawke's Bay Regional Council area because one, the land district area is out of date and two, it's easier to get data out of the Hawke's Bay Regional Council. So, um, a lot of you will have different thoughts about Hawke's Bay. Um, some of you will think of Hawke's Bay as Art Deco Weekend, our, our prime uh, tourist thing in Hawke's Bay. Fabulous weekend. If you haven't been to it, you should come to it. Or other people will think of Hawke's Bay as a venue for um, concerts. And this is the mission concert where we can stuff 20, 25,000 people into a, into a small valley. And when it's not raining, you have an absolute fabulous time. <laughs> other people will know that uh, you come in by tour boat. We're going to have about 90 um, tour boats coming into, into Napier this year and they will be touring all around Hawke's Bay and, and putting millions of dollars into, into the region. And you'll see um, they come into our port, which used to be wholly owned by the Regional Council. We've now di di divested about 48% of it. Um, and Or you will come to uh, ride round our... 2,200 kilometre plus cycleways in Hawke's Bay, which is an absolute fabulous time to, to go from cafe to cafe to cafe with the excuse of the biking in between. Or, if you're like me, you enjoy seeing disasters, and um, Hawke's Bay is well known for its erosion events, and this is one in 2012 out on the coast. But all those things are, are possible because of a history of farming in Hawke's Bay. Never forget that. You'll only hear about the tourism and the, the entertainment in the bay, but it's all based around um, farming. So what is Hawke's Bay? Hawke's Bay, uh, we take as, as the area whoops, that um, all, the, all the rivers flow into Hawke Bay or down to Cape Turn again. We go from the top of the ranges and the pop into onto the, um, the um, Rangitaik Plateau a little bit. Uh, we go from um, 5,200 5, feet, uh, excuse the old terminology, on Kawika J down to sea level. Uh, we, the Mohaka and the, um, Mohaka and the, to, to, to die, or the Mohaka goes up in the, in the Kaimanawas, the um, Tutai Kuri forms in the Kawikas. The, um, the next one goes right up into the Ka Kaimanawas, and then the, the Tukituk tuk -tuk is in the Ruahinis down through here. And so the, the big rivers, the Naroro, that gets its, a lot of its rain from the headwaters from the western side. Um, the uh, Tukituk catches its water. Uh, from the top of the Rohinis, but the Prongahau catches its water um, from ranges in the middle of the region, so it's much more susceptible to drought. We have um, something like 150,000 people in the bay. Um, most of them live in this little bit here, and there's a few up in Wairau and a few down through these other areas here. The, the weather... Um, is, is 
related to the topography. And so we have over 2,000 mils of rain up uh, north of Wairoa, Waikaramoana, uh, and along, along the coast here, down to less than 800 mils of rain on, on the plains. So we have a big diversity of, of weather. Um, we, are, we, we have high intensity rainstorms. Um, somewhere in Hawke's Bay, every five years, you can guarantee you're going to get 350 mils in a couple of days, and it creates um, devastation. Every 50 years, approximately, we get a regional event, 1896, 1938, 1988, Bowler. You know, so we've got another few years before the next one. Um, the structure of Hawke's Bay, we, we, we sit on the edge of the, the Australian plate with the Pacific plate pushing in underneath. And so all our hills and most of our hills in Hawke's Bay uh, run parallel to the coast, and this is because we're, we're the sedimentary deposits that were deposited on, on the bottom of the sea, and they've been pushed inland as the plate comes in, as the Pacific plate comes in, and they've been buckled and twisted and broken, so you, we've got limestone, sandstone, silts, mudstones, gravels, all sort of piled up on these hills and valley bottoms, and we've got fault lines running through and so a lot of it is broken up. Um, the, you go back here to the, the axial greywackies that came out of the sea about three million years ago, and the other side of that, we got the volcanic zone. And everything north of <coughs> Highway 5 has had a dollop of volcanic ash sitting on it, um, from uh, either Taupo, 230 AD, or Waimahia Lapilli, or the older Gisborne ashes. And, um, South of, of the Highway 5, except in by the ranges, we've got dollops of Lurse, which uh, is windblown silt that was blown off the ranges and the area to the west um, during the last, at the end of the last ice age. So we have this lovely complex of, um, of volcanic ash um, and, and Lurse and quite erodible hill country, and that makes a mosaic of uh, very variable soils. You add that to the climate where you get summer dry in the summer dry areas, which is basically everything east of Highway, Highway 50. Um, you get pans on the, the, the flatter to rolling land. Um, and and the, on our hill country, uh, most of it's eroded. And so you, you get a huge range of old mature soils through to young skeletal soils, use the old, excuse the old terminology again. Um, so we've got a lovely environment to, to develop a farm, farming systems in Hawke's Bay, and we've, we've had, um, from it's about 1850, we've had farming developed in Hawke's Bay, and so there's, there's been some pretty progressive work done, which you'll see during these visits. Um, so if we look at this picture, you see, round the back, we've got um, native bush and the ranges. Something like 12% of Hawke's Bay is flat to easy rolling. The rest is hill country, steep land, or mountain land. Right? Um, so we've got sheep and beef, predominant cover throughout New Zealand, uh, throughout Hawke's Bay, sorry. Um, our dairying is a strip in the high rainfall areas high rainfall areas around the back. The only area where we actually uh, irrigate our dairying is in here, as far as I know now. Um, we've only got, yep, yeah, and then we've got exotic forest land is the purple, about 120,000 hectares of the, of the stuff, and, um, and then orchards and uh, cropland on the, in the flat area, mainly around the Heratonga Plains. So that's, that's the spread of, of land use patterns that we've got in the bay. Now if we have a quick look, how much more time have I got? Four minutes. Four minutes, right. Okay, we've got, um, I won't talk about the pastoral area, you're going you're gonna to see that. If we go on to the next one, that's right, I've got to do that, don't I? <laughs> um, Dairying, 
Dairying, we won't talk about that because we're going to see that on a field day this, this afternoon. We'll go on to orcharding. Um, we have the biggest area of, of orchards in New Zealand, apple orchards, and there's been huge changes going on in the apple industry and it's very, very positive at the moment. This is a picture of a traditional apple orchard and then this is what we're coming to now. I measured the distance between some, some, some of these plants a couple of weeks ago and, and they're about um, 18 inches apart and they're held up by wires. And so we finish up converting, um, converting pasture land to a whole forest of dead Pinus radiata or, or aluminium structures, right? Two-dimensional um, two uh, rows of, of orchards. Uh, when you think that land on the Herotonga Plains costs between $100,000 and $170,000 a hectare, and it costs up to $70,000 to convert to, to apple orchards, and you don't get any production for three to five years, you know, we're talking about a pretty big investment that's going on in the region. The consequence of that to, to uh, farming is that farmers are getting pushed out of the, the, the traditional fattening land into the hill country, all right? And that's, that's a major problem as far as I can see because we've now got to do a lot more fattening on the hill country and therefore with summer, with climate change coming and in climate change we're going to get, um, well it's meant to be 10% drier in Hawke's Bay and 10% windier, we're going to have more storms, we're going to have more droughts, we've got to have uh, better pasture species in our summer dry hill country to allow us to, to continue to grow and fatten our, our sheep on that, that environment. Viticulture, not that much of it in Hawke's Bay. Um, this is the, some of the best um, red wine country in the world. Um, Pre-1867, it was the bed of the Nauru River, and the, during a flood it changed. They put stop banks up and stopped it going back, so it's now um, a premium area. Uh, in forestry is our biggest uh, industry. Um, it used to be a really dangerous occupation, but I put this up just to show you that this forestry gang has four people in it. The, the trees are cut mechanically. They're carted mechanically. The only person on the ground is the person that paints the ends of the logs, right? Now, I purposely put forestry on at the end because with this billion trees thing that's going on at the present time, We've got large areas going into pine trees and some farms in Hawke's Bay are being sold at $17,000 a hectare uh, of steep, unstable hill country and putting it into, into pine trees. What, Hawke's Bay will either go into one big Pinus radiata monoculture or you farmers are going to have to develop an agricultural farming pattern that uses each piece of land according to its capability. And I put this shot up down in Central Hawke's Bay, a farmer. The steep, steep areas and pine trees, the shelter belts protecting the, the good country, the, the badly eroding material down here is um, being allowed to revert into, into carbon farming. Uh, his wetland is being looked after as a nice wetland. And so you have this mosaic of trees and pasture and environment all working together. And if you guys can develop that pattern in Hawke's Bay, we've got a sustainable system that will work. Otherwise, you're going to have Pinus radiata over the whole lot. Right? One minute. One minute. Oh, I'm finished, yeah. <laughs> I, I can carry on talking if you want me to, but no. <laughs> Say one more thing, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I forgot my last two pictures. I can't do it. Can you bring that last picture back? You, we, we've got to also remember that we are producing, um, we've got to produce high quality food for the wealthy people in the world. And I finished up with 
whoops, no. We've got to produce high quality food for high quality restaurants. And um, this is the Mission Restaurant in, in Napier. And this is the sort of area that you guys have got to be producing food for, right? We're not producing food for Bangladesh. We're producing food for the billionaires of the world in the future. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, there'll be a panel discussion for, for more at the end.